guys, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online. I hope you guys are having a great day. So how do you go from a recipe for a food item to a finished product? What is the process? What are the steps from just an idea to a finished, packaged, ready to sell food product? So I'm gonna go over to the dry erase board over here and I'm gonna break down the steps for you right now. All right, it's Damien and I'm back again. So as I mentioned in the introduction, I'm gonna go over the steps for taking a recipe, try to get the board, set there we go the recipe from a idea to a finished product um, now i'm not going to get into a lot of super duper details but i'm going to show you the steps the basic outline for taking like an idea or a family recipe and then figuring out what would be the first second third fourth and next and, and so on the step-by-step -step process to make that happen okay so number one of course you have to have an idea do you have a recipe do you have a food product maybe it's your aunt's your grandmother's recipe for whatever it may be now keep in mind a few things really quick. Every single food product may have a different type of process to make it, okay? So if you're in the process of canning, let's say a tomato sauce recipe, it's gonna be different than a baked cookie and it'll be packaged differently, of course, okay? But there are, just, there are some basic steps though that would apply to any food product. Number one, your recipe. Do you have an idea? You'll start with that, okay? Now, with a recipe, you need to understand how long does it take for you to produce a single recipe, okay? Because what you'll think about down the road is when you scale your business, you're going to need to create larger batches. So you need to understand how long does it take to make one recipe. And if you multiply that by let's say five or 10 and you created a larger batch, figure out your time frame for production, okay? Just keep that in mind, okay? So step one, your recipe. Now, step two. How are you going to package it? Do you have an idea for how are you going to put it together? How is it going to be packaged? Okay. So you have to package it. Obviously, if it's a salsa, a liquid, a sauce, or something like that, it goes, I would recommend it either a jar, obviously, or a plastic container with a lid. But figure out if it's a dry product, are you going to go in a bag? Or are you going to go for a box? Figure out the packaging. Now, what's involved with packaging? It's not just what you put the product into, it's also how you label it, okay? So your packaging is gonna have a couple of steps to it. It's gonna have the package itself and the label, okay? And you're probably thinking, well, wow, Damien, this is like a no-brainer. Why would I need to watch your video to explain this? Well, a lot of people don't understand that it's not just a simple label with your name on the front and you slap it on there and then some ingredients on the back and maybe a barcode and your nutritional analysis, no. You need to kind of put a little bit more thought into it. You should have a, a logo, okay? You should have it designed by somebody. If you're not very good at designing, you can get someone to design it for you. But the label would include the logo, the ingredients, all of that good stuff. Traditionally, you have two labels. For the most part, products that are either um, put together in small batches, if it's not printed on the packaging, then you need to put it on the packaging with a label. So you'll have one in the front, and one in the back, okay? But think about how you want it to be designed because when you begin to create a brand or you want to create a business based upon your food product, you need to give it a look and it needs to be a look that you are going to enjoy that's going to reflect how your company is, reflect the ideas. Maybe it's the, the vision that you have for how your packaging will look. So maybe if you come out with multiple flavors or more than one item, there's going to be a look to it so people can recognize your brand, okay? so. Label, logo, ingredients, but put a little bit of thought into it, a little bit of creativity. And again, you can contract that out. You can get someone to do it for you if you're not very creative in that sense, okay? So recipe goes to packaging. So packaging, the third one, how are you going to sell it? Okay, think about how are you looking to sell it? It's, it's going to be dependent upon where you're making it too because cottage food laws do not allow you to sell a food product through the internet if you're in a, in a home setting, in a home kitchen. So are you using a commercial kitchen? And if so, that's great. Are you wanting to go into retail? Do you want to sell it to a retailer? Do you want to just sell it yourself directly online? If you're in a commercial facility, then you have the, they have the ability to go online and to sell it anywhere you want or to whoever you want when you're a commercial kitchen, okay? So that idea is going to allow you to go online. So is that where you want to be? Do you want to use an online platform? Do you want to just sell it to a food distributor and let them sell it to retail stores? So figure out how 
you're going to sell it. Okay, and then you, you don't have to, of course, this can change and you can evolve over time. But when you first start out, my recommendation, start small, start local. And then from there, you can build upon that and go much bigger. If you don't have any e-commerce experience, I've been online now for uh, over 11 years, uh, specifically with food business, about 10, a little bit over 10. So before I had my food business, I was doing other e-commerce things. So I've learned a lot about e-commerce over 11 years. So for me to stick with what I'm doing online would make sense. When I first started, I knew nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, obviously, because you have to start somewhere. But if you don't want to be online, sell local. There's a lot of re the cafes. There's a lot of grocery stores, gourmet food stores, a lot of local places that you can do it. Okay. So how do you sell it? Okay. Now, once you figure that out, how are you going to produce it? Are you going to make it or are you going to get a co-packer to make it? Okay, so do you make it or does a co-packer make it? Okay, now initially 99.99% of the time, it's going to be you, right? You're going to produce it in smaller batches. You're probably not going to mass produce a thousand of whatever it may be every single day right off the bat. That's not normally how it works. Is it you or co-packers? So down the road, this makes sense, okay? The co-packer makes sense maybe when you get to the point when you're scaling and you've got 10 grocery stores. Um, if you're online and you're selling 10,000 units a month, you probably don't want to be in the kitchen making that, whether it's your commercial kitchen or a retail store that you have. So think about that. So the fourth step, fourth step would be to figure out when you're going to start yourself or is it a co-packer, okay? So next up, the shipping, Okay. Who's going to handle the logistics of it, okay? The logistics are the aspects of shipping something from me to you, okay? So there's a lot of things to think about because shipping can be, if you go online, it's you to the customer, well, then it's just the two of you. If it's you to a food distributor and the food distributor sells it to a retailer, then you're shipping it to the food distributor. If you're looking to do it locally and maybe you have a couple grocery stores and you make it and you deliver it to them, Think about that too. So the shipping, the logistics, keep in mind how you want to do that, okay? And again, these steps are pretty broad and can really encompass any type of a food product that you're making most of the time, okay? Um, and there's a lot of little tiny details in between each step, of course. I'm not doing this video for that. I'm going to break it down really basic. If you're a beginner and you don't know about food products but you have a passion for a certain recipe or you just want to get into the food business, these are some of the basic steps and in kind of like an, an order in which you want to do, uh, think about it, okay? So shipping. So that's the logistics. Logistics, okay. All right, so with all of this being said, now you need to figure out your pricing. A lot of people would say, why would I go through all of these first, then figure out my pricing? Why don't I just have a recipe, figure out the size of my package and price it? Well, because all of these cost money. <laughs> maybe you don't realize it but all of this actually costs money okay um how you're going to sell it the idea of getting it further from you to a co-packer the shipping the moving of products the getting of ingredients that costs you time that costs you money and that costs you basically the two of those together in larger quantities when it comes time to scale when you're starting small it's going to be kind of a challenge to figure out your pricing because it's, it's going to change as you grow. When you get bigger, then you have the ability to buy ingredients cheaper, packaging cheaper. You can move a lot more products cheaper, okay? But very small, each one of these is really costing you some time and money. So then you want to figure your price. In order for you to determine the price, it's also going to be important for you to figure out for sure these right here. Number three... And number four, number three is how to sell it. And number four, who's making it. Why is that important? Because these two steps are going to be huge variables in figuring out your pricing. So if you make it, obviously you put the physical labor into producing it, moving it, shipping it, dropping it, all that stuff. It's going to be cheaper. If you have a co-packer make it and they source it, package it, ship it, that's going to cost you a lot more money you doing it's just going to cost you more time, okay? So these are some factors to think about. And then that brings you down to the price, okay? Now, once you determine the pricing because of how you're going to sell it, 
As an example, if you have a product and you ship it to a food distributor, they buy it from you. The food distributor then sells it and makes a, month, makes a profit by selling your product to a retailer. Okay, when they do that, like per unit, you're going to make a lot less money, okay? Because normally they buy it in pallets or big, big case packs, and they're not going to buy 24 units. They're going to buy 2,400 units, okay? So what that means is you're going to end up making a lot less money by having someone else involved or make more money by having you ship it directly and sell it directly to your customers, okay? So out of all of the processes in making a recipe into a finished product from here to here, these six steps are probably the most important aspects to think about. And like I said, in between all of this, there's a lot of other details, but I'm not going to get into that, okay? So recipe, package, label. How are you going to sell it? How are you going to manufacture it? How are you going to make it? Shipping and logistics. And then finally, determining that price based on all of that. So with that being said, I'll wrap up the video. I hope that that breaks down the basic steps. I had a handful of subscribers ask me questions about what are the basic steps they were just starting out. Um, and this was all new to them. They just know that they have a recipe for a product. Everybody jumps up and down about it. So they wanted to make money with it. These are the steps that will help you understand kind of the process. Now I could sit back and go in between each one of these and talk for about an hour to two hours on every single one of them, but I'm not going to do that. So if this was helpful, as always, give me a thumbs up. And of course, uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do that. We've got over 400 videos on Marketing Food Online. And again, if you want my help, you want to work directly with me, you need some assistance through some consultations or consulting. I have email consulting available and even phone consultations. If you just need an hour of my time, we have that available too. So you guys take care and I'll see you guys either on the next video or check out our podcast as well.